Hello. Hola. Hola, ¿qué tal? Can you hear me? <laughs> How are you today? Good. I'm uh, I'm today in the staff room in my school. Uh, yes, because I, I I work a little longer and I didn't have time to go to home. So I just decide, okay, let's have the class here. No problem. So Sounds good. Still wearing the masks. And uh, maybe if somebody comes, maybe I will eventually move to another room. But uh, for the moment, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Yeah, I am uh, just studying and working. <laughs> Yes, yeah. we can much. do that. Yes. <laughs> Good. Well, let's see. Today, we're going to do uh, intonation. So we're in our speaking and pronunciation class. So let me... All right. So intonation, you have this in Spanish as well. Uh, rising and falling at the end of a sentence. So we're going to look at three different intonation patterns in English. Uh, but first, we're going to start with eight more vocab words. So could I have you read these eight words? See, sí. so accurate, assist, chapter, chart, device, error, mm -hmm. feature, Tradition. Very good. All right. And let's see if we can match them into their nouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs. Last time you did this really easily. So we'll try again. How about chaptered? Uh, can be a verb and adjective, depend how we use it. Good. How about accurately? Um, it's an adverb because mm -hmm. the ending like traditionally too yeah and that ly we call it derivational suffix you don't mm -hmm. have to remember that but that derivational suffix makes it an adverb um, mm -hmm. from an adjective how about error a noun mm -hmm. error is a noun how about traditional um, i will say a noun too but uh, can be uh, ad, uh, adjective to depend how we use mm -hmm. uh, the noun for traditional is tradition okay the al oh, ending okay. is usually going to be an adjective okay mm -hmm. um, traditionally but adverb adverb and non-traditional uh adjective to good an adjective all right, chart. Uh, it's a, a noun. Mm -hmm. It is a noun. Can it be anything else? Maybe a, a verb to chart. It, it can also be a verb. We can chart a course, and that means mm -hmm. we're going to look at the map and decide where we go. How about featured? Um, a verb and an adjective. Good, a verb or an adjective. All right, here's a fun one, air. Error, I don't know what that means. Uh, so we had error earlier. That's mm -hmm. the noun. Error is the verb for that. Okay. So it, it's a strange verb. Um, E-R-R, error, means to make an error. Okay. Right. Erroneous. Um, erroneous. A ver. Uh, it's an adjective. It's an adjective that O-U-S is usually adjective, and you can see it's an adjective for error. All right, mm -hmm. assistant. Assistant can be a noun. Good, it's, it's a noun, and it comes from the verb assist, but I have mm -hmm. uh, an A-N-T ending. This one is going to mm -hmm. make it a human noun. So assistant is uh, a human assistant. Okay. Right. How about the next one, device? Device um, uh, can be a noun. I have a device. And I guess that can be a verb too. 
So look closely at the spelling. A device that's a noun is I-C-E. This one is I-S-E. Oh. So this is going to okay. be a verb. The I -S -E okay, I got it. It's usually verbs. Okay. All right. But that makes sense. You did really well there. Um, so those are eight more uh, words that we'll memorize. Here, uh, we're going to start talking about intonation. So you have rising and falling intonation in Spanish. So when you when you have a second, if you can uh, read this paragraph. Intonation is one way English package ideas. Without audible punctuation, we use intonation to identify units quality of thought. Right. So in English, all of our letters and our words, when we speak, we can hear just like we write them. But mm -hmm. we don't have anything uh, to indicate punctuation. So our period our commas, our dashes, our question marks, our quotations, those are all going to uh, be understood in speech through intonation. So whether we rise, fall, or maintain pitch, um, that's going to be our vocal punctuation. Okay, give me a moment. Uh yeah. Yeah, okay. No Sorry. Problem. That's okay. All right. So uh, we're going to look at especially two kinds of punctuation, indicative period, and we're going to look at two different kinds of interrogative question marks. Um, and this is all going to be for speech. So we're going to practice speaking it. Um, so for our indicative punctuation, which is just a period, could you read the paragraph at the top? Um, I, you want to read at the beginning or just the sentence? Uh, the sentence there. At the okay. End. We use maps to navigate. Oh, uh, sorry. I, the, the sentence above. Sorry. Okay. Um, you mean yeah. at, at the end? That? Right yes. There. Okay. <laughs> at the end of a statement, which is an indicative sentence, Indicate, indicate in reading forms with a simple period. The voice falls too close the thought. The right. So a closing or a falling intonation is going to say my thought is finished. So uh, the next person will feel free to respond to that point. So let's practice these. I'll say it and then I'll have you say it after me. So okay. we use maps to navigate. We use maps to navigate. Okay. I get lost easily. I get lost easily. My GPS device is broken. My GPS device is broken. Right. So usually <coughs> our pitch is rather maintained. So in order to fall off, we do need to go up a bit before we fall. So I've mapped out all the intonation in this sentence. And you can see right before we fall, we're going to go up sharply. Um, so let's practice now that we can look at this. We use maps to navigate. We use maps to navigate. Okay. I get lost easily. I get lost easily. My GPS device is broken. My GPS device is broken. Okay. So uh, up at the top one where we have, we use maps to navigate, notice that the arrow over the two is rather short. Uh, this is because it's an infinitive. So that two is a particle. It's not functioning as a preposition here. When it's functioning as a particle, it gets reduced to almost no sound at all. So rather than two, it's just going to be to. So we use maps to navigate. Try that one more time. We use maps to navigate. 
we use maps to navigate. Very good. And you can see the same thing at the bottom with is. Is is a very weak verb. Um, it's not going to have much sound at all. Sometimes it almost sounds just like a Z sound. Z. So my GPS device is broken. Does my GP, okay. My GPS device is broken. Very good. All right. So those are statements. They're pretty simple. Uh, at the end, we're going to drop off, and that closes the sentence like a period, but for the voice. Uh, could you read the instructions here for interrogative content punctuation? Questions which employ uh, okay. ha, why question? W -A. W, okay. W A question word will also fall at the end of the question. W A interrogative sentence do not use rising intonation. All right, so this one usually is confusing for people at first. When we're asking a WH question, uh, which is just the way that we say why, what, who, where, even how, it's an H question, but we call it a WH question. Uh, when we're asking questions that employ adverbs here, that we want content filled in, we're going to use uh, falling intonation, not rising intonation, even though it's a question. So for example, let's read these three. How do we get there? How do we get there? What is the address? What is the address? Who gave you those directions? Who gave you those directions? Right. So the idea here is that when a question begins with a how, a what, or a who, we don't need the punctuation like a rising intonation would give us. We already understand that it's a question. So our uh, intonation is going to fall at the end. That means our idea is closed. However, we're asking for them to give us a response with some information. So these are not yes, no questions. They are going to have to respond in a full sentence. So let's look at the uh, intonation for the whole sentence here. Uh, and let's practice one more time. How do we get there? How do we get there? What is the address or the address? What is the address? Who gave you those directions? Who gave you those directions? Good. So notice in the first sentence, our falling intonation, that word is only one syllable. So remember, we have to rise up before we fall. So we have to push it onto the word before it. So the get mm -hmm. is going to have to rise so that we can fall on there. Mm -hmm. Also notice that at the beginning of the sentence, our WH question is a little bit risen. So it's a rising intonation, but not much. So how do we get there? So get is going to go higher than how, but we're going to start the question with a bit of a rising intonation. Mm -hmm. But then when we get to our auxiliary verb or our modal verb do, it's going to go down and the subject is going to go down. These both reduced because they're not as important as our how, the verb get and there. These are just mm -hmm. function words. So our function words are going to reduce. Notice is, again, is very short, almost just a z sound. What's the address? And the doesn't get a full sound either, just the. And this happens for small particles and for um, determiners like articles. And then the B verb, they get very small when we're speaking. And then who gave you those directions? You can notice that all of these words are fully pronounced except mm -hmm. the first bit of D, because we're going to go up on rec, we're going to make that short. So instead of directions, it's going to be d directions. Because mm -hmm. if you remember when we did syllabification, yes. when, when one syllable is accented, the others are going to become almost neutral. Mm -hmm. So this D is acting normally. It's becoming almost a neutral uh instead of an E sound. 
All right, one more pattern here. Uh, could you read the instructions? With question which do not employ WH question words will rise at the end of the question. Mm -hmm. Yes, no questions are not use rising intonation. Right, so I call these interrogative confirmation functions because I'm asking them to mm -hmm. confirm information, yes or no. So let's practice here. Can you take me there? Can you take me there? Do you have the directions? Do you have the directions? Are they on their way? Are they on their way? Good. So in the middle one, do you have the directions? This one's a little harder to say than the others with the rising int intonation. And that's mm -hmm. because shuns is not where the accent is normally in this word. So mm -hmm. all nouns or all words in English have one accented syllable. But this mm -hmm. one, because of the placement in the sentence, it sounds awkward by having almost two um, accented syllables. So we have to still make the rect a little more distinct than the shuns, but mm -hmm. we have to rise at the end of the sentence as well. Mm -hmm. All right. So here, let's, let's practice with our visual aids. Can you take me there? Can you take me there? Do you have the directions? Do you have the directions? Are they on their way? Are they on their way? Good. So in the last one, the interrogative content punctuation, our question word at the beginning of the sentence used a little bit of a rising intonation. Mm -hmm. But here, all of our auxiliary verbs are going to use falling intonation. So instead of can, we want it to go down a bit, can. So can mm -hmm. you take me there? And then the next one, our auxiliary verb do. Do you have the directions? This do you, the subject and the auxiliary verb, they're always gonna go down. Have is similar to the be verb. Because we use it as a modal verb, uh, often it'll be slightly reduced or falling. Whereas here's a content verb. So this verb is going to be very important for understanding the context of the question. So we need rising. So have a very common verb is going to go down, whereas take a less common word is going to go up. We're going to emphasize this word. And then the last one, you'll see they're all falling intonation. Are they on their way? Until mm -hmm. we get to the last one. All right. So now we're done with the boring stuff and we get to practice with these sentences. So we've got okay. eight sentences here and I'm going to have you, uh, you need to move. <laughs> yes, <laughs> un momento. No Oh, oh, thank you. Sorry. It's... Okay, I, I'm in a class alone now. Okay, no problem. It's a, I think it's the lunch break for teachers. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so we're gonna practice, we're gonna do eight sentences and I've mixed them up. So first I want for you to identify me, is it a statement or a question? And if it's a question, is it a WH question or a yes, no question? And then we're gonna practice saying it and I'm gonna have you uh, try to um, give it the rising or falling intonation. So starting with number one, uh, is your information correct? Is this a statement or a question? It's a yes, no question. Good, it's a yes, no question. So what kind of intonation do we want to give it? Rising or falling? Um, at the end, um, it, um, rising. Rising intonation, right. So our yes, no questions, they're rising information. Uh, and this is because the thought isn't complete without the response of the person. Yeah. So we're leaving it open. So could you read this sentence using rising intonation? 
is your information oh espérate, déjame. is your information correct okay so is your information correct and uh how about number two who assisted you it's a why you question yeah it's a wh question um so we're, we're going to use rising or falling fallen falling so could you practice reading this one as well how assisted you okay. no sorry who assisted you okay who assisted you good we're gonna fall on the you all right three chapter two is my least favorite statement or question is that a statement statement so rising or falling it's uh it's uh like uh falling falling good so could you read this for me as well Chap chapter two is uh, sorry i is <laughs> chapter two is my least favorite perfect chapter two is my least favorite okay number four did you chart the course this is a yes no question mm -hmm. so we're going to go rise we're gonna rise right so give it a go. Did you chart the course? Close. You went down, but we want to go up. Okay. Try one more. Did you chart the course? Good. So we want to start low so that we can go up at the end. Okay. Did you chart the course? Okay. No, I don't got it. <laughs> vale. We're practicing. Did you chart the course? Perfect. Okay. Very good. All right, five. I'm not skilled with electronic devices. Question or statement? A statement. Statement, good. And you wanna give it a go? We're gonna use fallen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I am not skilled with electronic device. Electronic device. So look at that last one, devices with a plural S. So devices. Oh, okay. So we're going to fall in the is. Devices. No mm -hmm. Okay. I'm not skilled with electronic devices. Perfect. Very good. Love it. All right. Six. How many errors did you make on the test? Is it a uh, question or statement? It's a question and it's a W-Y, even that it's not, but no, I yeah. guess. That's, I use the word content because we're asking them to fill in some content for us so okay. because the h isn't a wh so could even ask h questions but we're using question words here you're right okay so we're going to use yeah. following intonation mm -hmm. okay so how many errors did you make on the test perfect you went down right at the end i love it how many errors did you make on the test good all right Seven, my phone has a lot of neat features. It's an estimate, so it's down. It's down. My phone has a lot of neat features. Very features. good. A lot of neat features. All right, features. and eight. What are some of your family traditions? Is it a statement or question? It's a question mm -hmm. and it's rising. What kind of question and is it? So you start and go down. Okay, we're gonna go down at the end. Follow. What are some of your family traditions? Good. What are some of your family traditions? And okay. let's practice some syllables just so that we remember from last week. So information. How many syllables is information? Two, three. A little more. Let's sound okay. it out. In for me shen. So one, two, three, four. four. Sorry. That's okay. I know there's lots of noise around you right now. So I understand. <laughs> can you hear it? <laughs> I can hear a little bit. So don't okay. worry. Uh, we'll, we'll go slow here. Uh, all right. How about chapter? Two. Two. Favorite. I will say three. Right. Technically, there's three. When we're looking at it, reading it, we see three vowels. 
for some reason in American English, we don't pronounce the O. And this isn't a rule of phonics. It's just something that we do. So it sounds like two when we're speaking, favorite. Um, but when we're writing, we recognize that it has three vowels, favorite. Um, so in British English, they're going to pronounce all these vowels in American English. We don't pronounce the O in the middle. So we say favorite. All right. How about electronic? Okay, let me see. I say four. Four, good. Electronic. Good. All right, errors. I will say two. Two, good. And where do I want to divide? This In the word? middle of the R. Er, er the middle or of the R's. Yeah. Yeah. All right, features. I will say two. Two, good. Features and traditions. Three. Three, good. Traditions. All right. Last thing we're going to do with these sentences is we're going to identify the noun phrase and the verb phrase. So we're going to separate subject from predicate. All right. So number one, where is the subject? Um, so here, because it's a question, mm -hmm. I will say your inform your information mm -hmm. is the subject. Good. And where's the verb? Is. Is is the verb, and because it's a yes/no question, we invert. So the the be verb or the h verb, if we have one, have is going to switch. So what about correct? Is this part is, of the subject or the predicate? Is the predicate it's and is, uh, yeah, it's because is information is almost, is trying to put equal to correct. It's, exactly, it's drawing an equal sign. The technical term yeah. for this is a subject complement. Subject complement. Right, and complement. In Espanol is atributo. Atributo, si. Si, el atributo es a complement. And complement in grammar is spelled with an E, not with an I. So there's a compliment, which is saying a nice thing to someone. That's with an I. Okay. In grammar, it's complement with an E. Um, so if you okay. see that written in grammar, it's not grammar telling you something nice. It's it's <laughs> atributo. Uh, okay. All right. Number two, who assisted you? Where's the subject here? Hmm. I will say who because it's an interrogative pronoun. Good. It's an interrogative pronoun. And a pronoun, when we use a pronoun, it's the entire phrase. So yeah. a subject is going to be one noun phrase. So we've got who. That's our subject. So our predicate is assisted you. Where is the verb in this? Assist. Good. And so what is you? The, the complement. Uh, this one's not a compliment uh, because we're not using a be verb or a linking verb. We're using a uh, either a transitive or intransitive verb. Okay, so if it is an intransitive verb. Yeah, it's an intransitive verb. So we're going to need some kind of. We're sorry, it's. I don't know the name. I can see in Spanish and I do the parallelism in my brain. Okay. Honestly, in uh, the terminology, I don't mm -hmm. think I'm going to get it. Oh, that's okay. We're, we'll, <laughs> we'll go slow. Um, so you is going to be an object. And because the assistance is happening to this object, not with this object, it's going to be an indirect object. Indirect, yeah. So it will be the same in Spanish. Yeah. All yeah. right. So three. Uh, we'll, we'll just stick with subject predicate for now and we'll focus on other things later. So just subject okay. predicate uh, for number three. To, to be honest, I, I like to do that, but to what I really need more is like you, because when I see that like that, it's mm -hmm. a little for me, 
even, you know, I do in the analysis in my brain, but the truth is that even that I know mostly with my brain, when I talk, I'm not, I'm not going through, oh, this is a compliment direct, da 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 And, um, and uh, when I talk, um, for me, I will not be thinking in, in this deep grammar, if that makes sense. Yeah. I know that it's helpful because if I got the structure, I will know how to put that. Mm -hmm. But um, it's, it's, I don't think that, I, that that will help me to improve my speaking, if that makes sense. All right. So we, we do have to build a foundation and I have to know where you're at. Um, yeah. But we're not going to focus on it too much here. Um, but let's yeah. just finish subject and predicates and then we'll move on to the next thing where we're. Okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, chapter two is my least favorite, just subject and predicate. Okay. So the subject will be chapter two. The verb mm -hmm. is, and my least favorite will be the attribute or the complement. Okay. So yeah, the did, did you know the <laughs> did you know the chart co course? I will say the verb here is you, the verb is chart, and uh, the complement direct because is the course course okay. mm -hmm. course. And in uh, the other I is the the subject, mm -hmm. not I am am the verb and not a skill with electronic device the complement mm -hmm. uh the subject in the next one how many errors did you make on this test i will say uh errors is the subject no you is the subject make is the verb errors will be the complement direct mm -hmm. and on the test is uh, part of the predicate that complement the errors on the test. Okay. My phone has a lot of neat features. Features. I will say my phone is the subject. Has is the verb. Is transitive. Transitive. So um, features. Features will be the um, complement direct. And need is an uh, is, is an adjective that is giving information about the features. This they are. And they, a lot is quantity, how many? Uh, I don't know how do you say in English, but in Spanish we will say complemento circunstancial de cantidad is a quantity complement. It's a quantitative complement. Yeah. Uh, what are some of your family tradition? Your family tradition will be the, the subject mm -hmm. and Oh, what? What? Sorry. What will be the the subject? R will be the verb, and some of your family tradition will be the complement. Okay. Uh, yeah, my my hope was to make it more of a conversation, but we'll go on to the next one. Uh, so we're gonna read this using our rising or falling intonation. Most of it's going to be falling intonation, but every time you see a punctuation, we're going to want to give some falling intonation. All right. Okay. Can you read this for me? I'm not sure. I'm not sure that I exist. Exist actually. I am all the writers that I have read, all the people that I have met, all the women that I have loved, all the cities that I have seen. Visit. Sorry. Good, visited, and there's no that here, so all the cities I have visited. Visited. Good. All right, could you read this one using falling or rising intonation? Okay. So this is not a question, it's like a declaration, even that they start with for you. So what I think is this, you should give up looking for lost cat and start searching for the other half of your shadow. Good. And we want shadow falling on the door. Shadow. Good. So my my problem with pronunciation is that I really don't know how to read some words. So 
people don't get it. So for example, for me here, what is difficult is searching. I, yeah, I, I don't pronounce that correctly or in the, so sometimes, um, I don't know how to improve that. Of course, a structure is something that is wrong, but sometimes people have more difficult understand me because the word that I read or I see in my mind doesn't connect where I really say. Right. Because Spanish is phonetic and it's so simple. When I try right. to speak English, mm -hmm. I get confused. It's like, I, I almost want to read in Spanish, like searching. And people will say, what? And it's like, oh, it's E, here, like searching. Yeah, so I don't know how really, to do that. Really, uh, almost a neutral uh sound. It's searching. Searching. Like as you are. Searching. Yeah. Searching. 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 So yeah. I don't know if that is something that you memorize or how you know that. Uh, we... We learn that just by listening to how our mothers say it. That's uh, <laughs> okay. mostly how English phonetics are learned is that's how our mom says it. So if you don't have a mm -hmm. auditional memory, it's going to be hard, huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, that doesn't mean we can't learn it. And okay. the more that you learn, you'll, you'll start to naturally make connections. Yeah, I wonder if for me will be like kind of repeating and repeating, like searching, searching. And at the end, I got the sound somehow in my mind. But uh, even the, the sound, mm -hmm. at the beginning, I always say song, sound, song. All the time I say song. And people say, what? And I say, oh, it's sound. Yeah. And I, that's mostly just the problem of having a language that comes from three different root languages is yeah. uh, sometimes the words aren't going to look um, how they sound, especially the words that come in from German. Um, yeah. Whereas our, our Greek and French root words are going to be a little more phonetic. Um, hmm. All right, so we got one more quote here, and then we're going to read a short story. Oh, I guess I don't have a quote here. So we're going to read a short story. This is probably too small for you to see, yeah? Un poquito. Okay, um, I do have a little bigger. Oh, perfect, to, this is working. I have, I have to warn you and ask you a question. Um, the content of this story is a little uh, uncomfortable sometimes. Is that okay? What does that mean? Um, the story is about someone who tried to commit suicide for attention, but she doesn't succeed. Oh. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> I'm okay. Okay. <laughs> we pray for her. <laughs> yeah, we pray for her. <laughs> we rebuke the spirit of suicide. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's start. Let's just read one sentence at a time. So starting up at first. Okay. First, to me on the phone, in a half amused melancholy. Mm -hmm. Guess I'm not going back to school. Yeah. So we're going to read this story because a lot of English humor has to do with our intonation. How do we oh. So okay. a lot of this is dialogue. And you read the quote perfectly. Guess I'm not going back to school. She falls on the down. She's just making a statement. Uh, but now the responder asks a question. You want to read the next? Mm -hmm. Why not, Jane? Mm -hmm. So her name is Janice, Jan. Why not, Jan? Mm -hmm. So she's actually going to rise twice. She's going to go, why mm -hmm. not, Jan? Okay. All right, the next one. Oh, my mother. She says she can't afford it. Mm -hmm. How can I reproduce the uncaring inflection of Janice's voice saying conversationally that what she wanted she could not have, uh, it's too long sentence for me. I think I need to okay, let's, read let's before. Break it down. So it, it is a question, right? We're starting with how. So we know at the how? end we're going to fall. Mm -hmm. Okay, at the end, end or at the end of the comma? At the very, very end. 
Okay, so how can I reproduce the anchoring inflection on Janice's voice, saying conversationally that what she says she could not have? Oh, okay, I see that the other word is a subordinate, and it's not a question. Yeah, I exactly. see. And it goes very far. So we've, we've got about four different breaks that we can make here. One, yeah. thankfully for us, is after voice, we get a comma. So we know we can bring our voice down there. And that's a closing idea. How can I reproduce the uncaring inflections of Janice's voice? Now, saying conversationally that, now this that starts a relative clause. So usually- So, un momento, how do you say conversationally? That, conversationally? It's, this is super, super long, long work. So, conversationally. Uh, let's, we can break it down, the verb converse. Two okay. Converse is to converse. talk back and forth. So Conversation. Conversationally. Conversational. Okay. Conversationally. Yeah. Okay. It is a long word. How many syllables? Conversation. Six syllables. Uh, yeah. It's like you almost cannot breathe during the word. Yeah, Conversationally. The, yeah, exactly. And the accent is in the middle, just like you put it. Conversationally. So, okay. Uh, the the end kind of almost gets lost sationally uh to conversationally that and then falling what she wanted she could not have falling again so we've got four breaks in the sentence where we can take a brief pause uh all right can you read the quote that comes after the sentence so i guess i'm not going back good so that's janice speaking again so i guess i'm not going yeah back. So she's saying, not going to school, mom can't afford it. Her friends, oh, why not, why not? She says, ah, I'm not going back. So she's acting like she doesn't care. And we get mm -hmm. that, I don't care, by the way her sentences just drop at the end. They're just statements, there's no feeling in them. All right, so can you read what her friend responds? I'm so sorry, Jan. Mm -hmm. So I'm so sorry, Jan. So she's noticed she's got that comma breaks and she's including her name and names are going to be rising intonation so she's mm -hmm. got more emotion okay. in her voice here all right and the next sentence but then it's struck by another thought you'll know what so here's a question you know what and the only oh, way we know, know that it's a question when we're speaking is by rising our voice so but then mm -hmm. struck by another thought you know what so this is Janice speaking again. Now she's got some emotion in her voice. Um, so we're gonna see what, what does she have some emotion about? So in the next one, uh, Janet's friend is just gonna ask, what? Now this isn't a sentence, it's just a WH word. So we can use rising intonation here. What? No. We want them to tell us. All right, can you read the next sentence? Darn near killed myself this afternoon. Yeah, so darn near killed myself this afternoon. But here, again, a return to no intonation. Straight what that down. mean, darn? Darn, uh, it's kind of an old English slang term, uh, just to mean, uh, in this case, that I came really close. Mm. Uh, so like, uh, my brother's running with a stick, I could say, Oh man, he darn near jabbed his eye out. Okay, like almost. Almost near yeah. killed myself this afternoon or something like yeah, that. Exactly. Okay. Uh, it's an emphatic word. So it doesn't really have much content. It just adds emphasis. So notice how in her sentence structure, there's no rising intonation, but she's using this emphatic word. So it's like yeah. she's trying to fake emotion. She's using words yeah. with emotion but her sentence actually doesn't have any emotion in it. So it's all down. All right, next one. Jan, yeah. how? Right, so two different sentences here that have rising intonation. Uh, all right, and then the next almost whimsical indifferent. Almost whimsical indifferent. Look at myself in the garage and turn on the car motor. motor. So this first word, locked, locked with the ed, usually that ed is almost like a t sound. So yeah. the emphasis at the beginning, 
locked myself in the garage. Locked myself in the garage. Mm -hmm. So what is um, whimsical? Whimsical is uh, like whimsy is like a cute story. It's not serious at all. Oh, sorry, I have somebody. That's okay. Yeah. Can you repeat? Yeah, so it means the opposite of grave. It's not grave. Okay. Bravo. Okay. It's light and airy, almost again with, with no emotion. And mm -hmm. indifferent means she doesn't care too. So she's in a light tone, almost a joking saying, ah, locked myself in the garage, turned on the motor. So she doesn't feel it, right? It's all falling intonation. She doesn't really care about what she's saying. Mm -hmm. All right. So what? How does her friend respond? Uh, but why? Mm -hmm. Again, rising intonation. What does she say? What does Janice say? I'm dumb, cause I, I couldn't go back. I suppose no. Good. So I don't know. Like what that mean? Ah, I don't know. Okay, what that mean? Like I don't know. She's shortening her words here too. Now it means okay. I don't know. So she's not enunciating either. Now she's shortening her words. She really doesn't. I care. don't know. Okay, right. because I couldn't go back. I suppose. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. So okay. she tells her friend this information that she can't go back to school, but she presents it vocally as if she doesn't care. But now yeah. we. See cared enough to try to kill herself so we yeah. know that emotion but she has trouble expressing it with her voice yeah all right how does her friend respond what happened mm -hmm. yeah and how does is, it is a, we say what happened or what happened what happened that mm, what the, happened okay yeah, the e almost slides out it's mm. what with, happened okay what happened Mm -hmm. Oh, the fellow that was cutting our lawn heard the motor and came and got me. A little more. Oh, I was pretty near out. Okay. So the fellow means a guy, the man, mm -hmm. was cutting our lawn. And this herd, again, this is like search. The EA is a uh, sound herd. Mm -hmm. So search heard so our lawn heard the motor and came and got me mm. i was pretty near out and pretty is a diminutive opposite of emphatic so she's just trying to make it sound less than it was i was pretty near out all right but again these are all statements they're falling intonation how does jan's friend respond but that is terrible, Jane. Whatever possess, possess. Possessed. And this is called an M dash. We use it to mean the thought kind of trailed off. She didn't finish it. Probably someone interrupted her. So in okay. the next, we'll see an interruption. So that long dash means no intonation, not down, not okay. up, because the idea isn't finished. So she says, but that's terrible, Jan. Now it's a down, but this is uh empathy down not mm -hmm. state down. so this is she's now sympathizing with her she's done asking questions and she's trying to sympathize with her mm -hmm. and jen says here oh well you want to read this oh well say changing again going to sally's tonight yeah. So now Jan is using rising intonation, but she's changing the subject, right? Mm -hmm. so she says, oh, well, say, and then she changes the subject. Going to Sally's tonight? So now she's speaking like a normal person, right? She's asking a mm -hmm. question, rising intonation, but it doesn't sound normal to us because she just talked about a really heavy subject using the wrong intonation. Mm -hmm. All right. And reading here and later. And later that night at Sally's, where Janice was not the center of the group, but sat talking to me and um, to Bob. Right. So if you've noticed these little uh, colons, 
these mark out like a stage play. It's telling the reader where the people are and how they're speaking. So this is telling us that later this night after the conversation, uh, Sally, uh, they're at Sally's house. Dennis is not the center of the conversation. That means she's not the one who has attention given to her right now. No one's paying attention to her. Uh, but she sat maybe aside in the room and she's talking with the friend and Bob. So what does she say to Bob? Nearly killed, killed myself this afternoon, Bob. Right. So what is she doing? She's, she's trying to get attention, but how is she getting attention? Like showing no, yeah. Yeah. Like so whatever. Circumstance, yeah. She's acting like she doesn't care. And yeah. that is people's attention because the intonation is wrong. So the yeah. intonation is going to be really important for how we, how we attract attention to what we're saying. All yeah. right. So Bob respond. What? Mm -hmm. So he's using a lot of intonation here. And then yeah. lightly, so not very soft. What does Jan say? Lightly, nearly killed myself. Locked myself in the garage with the car motor running. Right, so notice now her sentences are getting shorter. Each time she tells the story, it's shorter and shorter, more pithy, they say. The punctuation is more sharp. So mm. lightly, nearly killed myself locked myself in the garage with the car motor running. She's got no subjects here either. The mm. subjects are all implied. So she has reduced her subjects and she starts with the verbs. Killed. Mm -hmm. All right. How does Bob respond? But why, James? Jane? Mm -hmm. yeah. Rising intonation. What does she say? I guess because they wouldn't let me know, let me go back to school. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Falling intonation, so it sounds weird. All right. What does Bob say? Oh, I'm sorry about that, Jane. But what about this afternoon? What did you do? Yeah. So she didn't give him much information, right? She kept her sentences short. She used falling intonation to mean that my thought is finished but it's not much information. She changes the subject and Bob's asking her for more information now. So uh, he says, oh, I'm sorry, they won't let you go back to school, Jan, but what did you do this afternoon? It's very surprising, right? So what does Jan say? She's giving a little more information. Man cutting the grass got me out, like right. flat too. Flat, right? She took away the article, right? The man cutting the grass got me out. She's making it more flat by taking away as many function words as she can. Mm. And then here's Sally coming over. It's Sally's party, remember? And mm -hmm. what does she say? What is this, Jane? Right. So she's talking loudly enough for Jan at the other side of the room to hear her and come over and ask her what's going on. Mm -hmm. And how does Jan answer her? Oh, I'm not going back to school again, like right. indifferent. So is this what Sally was asking her about? Probably no. not, right? All right. So how does now her friend, she's cutting in. So myself cutting in, mm -hmm. uh, asking Jan a question. What does she say? How, how did it feel to be dying, Jane? Mm -hmm. Rising intonation. She's asking her a question. She wants more information from her. But now we see... How does Jan answer? Uh, laughing. Ye, funny. All black. How, how do you pronounce the G-E? What that mean? G. It means G. like, huh, G. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. G. Hmm. Yeah. She doesn't sound very engaged, right? She's yeah. funny. Yeah. She's, she's not feeling it deep enough. She's not expressing her feelings. She says, be yeah. funny, all black. Yeah. Even shorter and shorter. How does, uh, so then it says, then to Sally's incredulous stare. Try this word, incredulous. Incredulous. 
Yeah. Incredulous. So in credulous, we know cred, credo, uh, is for believe. So incredulous, unbelievingly. And then the stare yeah. is the looking at her. So yeah. Sally's. We have the same word in Spanish. Incredulo. Oh, incredulo. Yeah. Incredible. All right. So how does uh, Sally's. For, stare. She's going to add some information here. Nearly. Nearly kill, killed myself this afternoon, Sally. Mm -hmm. So now Sally gets the information, right? Mm. Uh, yeah. Mm. So, uh, <laughs> what do you think it's about funny. This unfortunate but funny story? Um, yeah, it's uh, it's in interesting. I will I will say I can see. From the point of view of the author want to transmit is this um the the verbal language don't connect with uh, what is really happening right. and that create a conflict because it's like when you are saying something but uh where you want to transmit is not like i'm super funny or oh this is super fun it's not makes sense your body language where what you are expressing. I feel that that is what is going on here. And um, there is something I can't remember how we say in English, but it's a, a thought that get in conflict. So may you not understand or make questions. Like contradictory. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's exactly what she's doing here. And, and she's using this conflict of speech and emotion to draw us into her story, right? Yeah. Shirley Jackson is using this to make us read her story that she's written. But in the yeah. story, Janice is using this for people to draw into her story, right? And yeah. when she draws them in, she gets shorter and shorter, uh, drawing yeah. them in. Um, so yeah, that's, that's Shirley Jackson. Uh, okay. She wrote the story in about 1950. She uh, published it in a magazine, and a man read it. And when he read it, he said, whoever wrote this, this is the one that I'm going to marry. Uh, oh, my goodness. <laughs> and he didn't end up marrying her. So Shirley Jackson. Uh, and wow. Yeah, so, I didn't know that. He was the uh, terminate for sure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But he, he saw this, and he thought, wow, she has a lot of talent. She's a very talented writer. Uh, yeah. That, that's true. And she's able to capture intonation into her writing. Uh, mm -hmm. so, uh, we can see how important it is, not just for speaking, uh, but also uh, when you're writing. You can use yes. the intonation of how the person is going to hear it in their head to draw them into your writing as well. Yes. And then I'm sorry, I know it's the time, and also I need to go. <laughs> I need to run today. Sorry. Thank you for the class. Yeah. I love it. No one will do this, but on uh, Thursday we'll talk about uh, everyone. Okay. Gracias. Adios. Bye-bye.